Hello and welcome to this Game Guru tutorial on changing the AI bot character script. Now, it's a bit of a mouthful and I did a previous video to this, but because it was 43 minutes long and had uh, a crackling effect because it was using the wrong microphone, you will never see it. Nor would you want to sit through 43 minutes of that. So we're going to do it again in five minutes. Unfortunately, I already have created the files from the previous one, so you get the nice condensed version. So what I'm intending to demonstrate is you're already familiar with going into the Characters folder, selecting, say, um, the Masked Soldier, and then creating a waypoint, and then basically doing test game, and it'll patrol from there to there, run backwards and forwards. But essentially, there's only five animations now. There is the idle, the move, the reload, the hurt, um, and one more. <laughs> uh, but the question in the, in the forum was, we need more, we want more legacy behaviours, we want the ability to, that the character can just walk without the gun drawn, and then only when you're actually you know, shooting the player, will actually draw his weapon and then start chasing you. So that's what this video is about, is how to modify the scripts to create that behaviour. Because a couple of updates ago, we decoupled the AI animation and movement systems and put them into scripts, into lower script format. So they're no longer hard coded, you have full control of it. Now that control is so vast, there's so much power in that control that it can be a little bit confusing. And so this video is a little tour into that world. So currently if I look at the script for this character, you'll see that it's AI soldier.lua. Well I created another script, this is just something that you can do quite easily, called AI calm. Now I apply the changes to that and run it, you'll actually see him doing something slightly different. But I want to go through the process. Step one is I created a new character entity just by copying the FPE file and the bitmap file and rename them. I also renamed this one here. I also changed the script name to the script that I would eventually create. And I also added another animation. This is the new animation system. And this was the old one. Now the old one contains all the animations for all the different behaviours. But you can see the new one's quite simple. It only has idle, move, kick, hurt and reload. This is one that I've added. The request that the walking can be quite civilised until they actually see you and then you shoot them and then they, they get really angry. So the idea is how do we get that animation to play inside our script. So the way we do it, like I said, we create a new script which we called AI Calm. We made sure that we changed the function names so it would be properly called. So whatever the file name is, add underscore init and underscore main because those are the two functions that get called. Now you'll notice here um, we've got AI Calm shoot. This will be this is different than the other one because what we've actually done we've created our own copy of Module Combat Shoot. So Module Combat Shoot already exists. We just created a new one called underscore new, and I can demonstrate that by going into the AI. And you'll notice that that's the original, and that's a copy we've made of it. That's the original, and that's a copy we've made of it. So you can see that in this script, it requires this module. But we're actually going to use our own module that we just made a copy of. So you can see it's calling the init and main of this module. If we go to that module, you'll notice at the top, it's also got these underscore new, underscore new, because we renamed the module dependencies with our own scripts, because we're not using the old scripts, we're going to have our own. So I've put underscore new to separate out our own version of Combat Shoot and our own version of Combat Core. And that was just done through search and replace on this one, and search and replace on this one, which actually should have delivered some of that 67 uh, replacements, so it's not something you want to do manually. So as you can see here, Instead of it just being called module combat core, it's now combat core new. And that iterates all the way down. We've not created our own versions of aggro and camera override because those are quite small modules and they're quite happy. We don't really need to customise those. But the crux is, once you've created these copies and they've all linked together and you've made sure you've done it right and there's no errors, then you'll just be able to run this and it will, will perform just like the old one, but now have the ability to edit these scripts. And this one, the combat core, is the lowest, it's the biggest level with the most detail where all the fun stuff happens. 
So essentially the behavior I wanted to do is when you um, first encounter the character, it walks with the calm walk. But if you shoot them, that they actually get angry, then they actually use the, the one they, they have now, which is the gun pointing forward. So I used this flag, angry hurt, which already existed. Uh, all I did was just initialize it in the init function. And if we just search for that, you'll actually see where it plays its role. By default, it's zero. But if we actually look a bit further down, you'll actually see that when you shoot the player and the player get uh, sorry shoot the AI bot and the AI gets hurt, it sets that flag to one, which is our trigger point to use a different animation. And so in this case, when they're on patrol, where well, normally they would use um, this, which is the gun facing forward, if they have no reason to be angry, they're going to use our new animation, which is animation slot five. If you look at Kerm Soldier, animation 5 is our new animation. Always remember to change Animax to encompass all the animations you're specifying, otherwise it won't actually load it in. So it's important that you remember to do that. And also, not only when you're patrolling, but you also have one when you're hunting. So when they see you and they go darting towards you, do you want them to use the nice, relaxed Kerm or the one with the gun facing forward? Particularly important because the gun won't shoot if it's f facing downwards. The gun has to be pointing at the player in order for the gun to be able to be shot. So it's a pretty clever subsystem that you don't have to worry about. So essentially there it is. If you set that to 1, it will start pointing the gun forward. If you step to 0, which is the default, it does this relaxed walk. Okay, so we've got uh, AI cam. So let's double check. Uh, it is going to use that. So we'll delete that, we'll save, and then we'll drag it in again. Because I've noticed it says masked soldier. It should really say calm soldier, shouldn't it? In fact, the more I think about it, <laughs> I think that actually was the masked soldier. So if we go to calm soldier, drop that guy in. Yes, calm. Set a cone of sight range and angle. And then apply changes and run. Okay, so now we've got a nice calm, relaxed walk. So we've now changed the script from the one I envisaged to one that we've just made up here and now. We've got our own script, we've got our own combat core, we've got our own combat shoot, everything's hunky-dory. Of course, everything else about the scripts is the same. If I go into the cone of sight and he sees me, he'll still shoot me. Everything is still the same. It's just we've now got it to actually do that really nice walk rather than the the gun drawn. But in order to provoke him, I'm going to need to shoot him. So I'm going to have to give myself a weapon. So I'll give myself the Colt and the 11 pistol. Some extra health so I can survive the test. So now I've got a gun. And we antagonize him a little bit. Like so. He's now his gun's drawn. He's going to my last position. Can't see me because I'm outside of the cone. So you see now he's actually walking with his gun raised. And once he returns to his patrol path... He's now got his gun raised, which is different than the one you saw before, where he's basically walking casually. Now that's just a very small demonstration of how you can affect the logic of the scripts that have now been externalized. That was just a difference in walking, but you can extend it to all kinds of things. I mean, if you look at this, you can actually change the idle. So when he's just standing around, he can actually just be fidgeting um, with the weapon not drawn. And they can have a whole, whole completely different set of animations for when he's in alert mode. There's also other really cool animations like cautious move forward where it's a halfway state between completely relaxed and totally in aggressive alert mode. It's sort of, I have been attacked and I'm not comfortable yet, so I'm sort of looking around with suspicion. It's a really nice animation. In fact, I'm so excited about this, I'm going to show it to you just by copying in that. Now remember, these are actually hard, um, hard values for the FPE. And so you can't just change those values and expect them to instantly migrate. What you've got to do is delete the entity completely from the level. Because when you load them in, it remembers those values and it stores them so you don't have to keep hitting the file system all the time. But it does mean that when you change them, you really just have to bring them in again. So we're going to drop him in again. He won't have his cone of sight. Because his cone of sight by default is of an extremely long range. So we'll just pop those back. And then when we do our test game, 
So now you see the animation has changed. It's no longer the, the gun at his side and it's no longer the facing straight forward. It, let me just stay out of his corner of sight. You'll actually see that he's got this sort of uh, suspicious about him. He's looking around, he's not quite sure. And again, you've got another animation for, for walking, but portraying a different behaviour. And you can repeat that for as many as you want. As you can see, this is the legacy one, which the hard-coded system did. But it had completely relaxed movement, cautious, completely unarmed movement. He had sitting in a chair and then getting up and then getting back in the chair. Swimming, both idle and movement. These are all related to the pistol weapon. So you've got the, the gun raised high and you're very, very alert. But you can still do fidgets and things. You can do rolls into crouches. You can move around whilst crouch and then you can ro cro roll back up into a... A stood position. There's even animations within the model file that aren't even on this list. This was basically a subset that was hard coded. Now you have access to these scripts, specifically the combat core scripts. You can pretty much trigger any animation you find in the model, and there's lots of animations in there for you to discover. And here's a quick tip on how to find out about all the animations in a model. Simply go to the script that controls the character. Find AI view animations .lua, apply those changes and run. You'll notice that I'll just put the gun away. You'll notice that now you've got AI view animations FRM at the bottom. If you just left click, you can step through the animations. The first 20 are just um, phonum facial expressions. So as I click through, you can see each frame has been demonstrated. If I hold down shift whilst I left click, I can zoom through all the animations and as you can see you've got all the standing idle, the fidgets, the ducking, um, the rolling, the jumping, the throwing grenades, the hiding and then going on you've got other things like conversation but I didn't know there was conversation animations, sitting down, stood up, running, swimming, climbing ladders, more conversations pointing in different directions, you don't have to use ragdoll deaths, you can actually place your own, those are going up and down stairs and the list goes on. So if you wanted to delve into the animations and have a bit of a look, that's how you do it using AIViewAnimations.lua. So that is a whistle-stop tour of how you can take the standard AI scripts that have been provided by default and then modify them in order to include not only your own animations but your own logic behaviours for your character. And I've just demonstrated changing one movement walk animation. But you can pretty much couple any animation with any form of movement now in order to create the character behaviour that you want. Admittedly, it does require some knowledge of scripting and your ability to code directly influences your capabilities of adding extra functionality. But now it's out in the open. Now it's something that everybody can do. Expect to see some evolutions in the community, some improvements to the scripts. And of course, they are still on the voting board for me to step in and add things like this myself. And I'm happy to do so. But it will be at the decree of the voting board. And if everybody wants a particular thing and it just happens to be an improvement to the AI behaviours, I'm your man and I'll get in there and I'll have those behaviours. My suspicion, though, is that a lot of these things will actually come from the community long before I actually get round to doing them. And that's the way it should be. The idea is that the power should be in your hands to be able to affect the logic of your game any way you see fit. Because that way you end up with unique games that you can create and then share with your friends and who knows, even sell them on Steam. <laughs> so that was Scripts Your Way. Uh, opens up the AI system. We've also got a May update that expands that philosophy into the player control mechanisms so you have full control over the player's first and third person control perspectives which goes into enormous detail such that 500 new Lua commands will be added to the scripting system just to give you that level of power so really it is now the, in the hands of the scripters to create the next generation of behaviours I've just given you a start and a little glimpse in what I hope is not a video that is too long-winded. So hopefully it was of some help, that you got some insights, and maybe even a footing so you can get started with making little changes to the character's behaviours and logic.
So thanks again for your patience and I look forward to making the next video. So until then, I'll say goodbye.